my name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another Upcycle by Little Toe where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. I'm going to be doing a thrift flip challenge video today and I've done this previously on my channel but this one is really special because I'm doing my first ever collaboration with fellow YouTuber Madison Lin. I'm going to link her channel down below and if you love sewing and fashion content make sure you subscribe to her channel. I'm a huge fan of her work and here she is to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Madison from my YouTube channel, Madison Lynn, where I share my love and passion for fashion and sewing with you all. I take you along on all of my sewing adventures and educate you about fashion and sewing related things. Fun fact about me is that I'm actually a high school fashion design teacher by day. So YouTube is just an extension of my classroom to share the things I love with all of you creatives on the internet. I'm so excited about this collab with Tiffany because we both love thrifting and we both love turning thrifted things into something new. So it's going to be fun to see what we turn the pieces we thrifted for each other and do. If you've seen any of my other thrift flip challenge videos, you'll know that the rule is we have a $10 budget where we can thrift one or multiple items, but the challenge is that we have to turn all of those things into one cohesive outfit. Before I show you what Madison picked out for me, here is a little sneak peek of what I sent her. I just got to the thrift store and I'm still traveling, so I'm at a Salvation Army in Indiana, but I'm super excited to pick out some stuff for Madison, so let's do this. Walked in and immediately found some great potential contenders. Of course, I had to check the linen section as well to see if there was anything good. This Salvation Army also had a decent craft section, which I spent way too much time at. Here I am packing up the items to send to Madison. I bought her three things and spent just under $10. Make sure to check out her video, which I've linked down below to see what I sent her and more importantly, to see what she turned it into. Now time to wait for her package to arrive. I think the package she sent me just got here today, so I'm so excited to see what she sent. Okay, I have the package here. I have no clue what Madison sent me, um, but I feel like our aesthetics are pretty similar, so I'm really excited, but still nervous, but really excited. Look how pretty it is. Okay, we have a white dress, and we have a green dress. I'm pretty excited about these and now I am going to figure out what I'm gonna make. Let's take a closer look at the items Madison sent me. First up is this green dress. The fabric is medium to heavyweight and it has a little bit of stretch to it. This dress is so bright and playful which makes me a little nervous because I'm not great with colors but I do love these embroidered flowers on the fabric. Moving on to the white dress. It didn't have a textile label but I think this is a linen blend fabric. I'm actually pretty excited about this one because it feels so summery to me and there is a significant amount of fabric to play with. It's been a few days since I received the items from Madison and I think I finally have an idea of what I want to turn these items into. So this green dress is so lovely and vibrant and I was trying to figure out how to make it into a cute summer outfit and I was really inspired by vintage swimwear. Specifically 50 style swimwear and play suits. Here are some of my inspo photos. I'm going to take this dress and turn it into a two-piece set with shorts and a matching crop top that's more bralette style. Going with the swimwear route, I was also inspired by resort wear and I've decided that I'm going to turn the white dress into a cover-up. I'm going to make a little blouse with like really big billowy sleeves that I can wear over the two-piece set to make one cohesive outfit. I'm not too concerned about the white dress because I'm pretty sure I'll have enough material to achieve the look I'm going for, but I am a little concerned about the green dress. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have enough material, but there's only one way to find out, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the shorts and I'm going to be using a pattern that I drafted, but I'll also link a free shorts pattern in the description box below. Here is the pattern I'll be using for the front of my shorts. As you can see here, it is much wider than my regular pant pattern. I'm adding three pleats to the front and this additional width is to accommodate that. Using this pattern, I cut out my fabric. I didn't have a big enough piece, so I cut out two pieces that I've sewn together along this seam. To make the first pleat, I fold this piece right sides facing along the seam that joins the two pieces. I'm going to draw a line one inch from the seam, making sure I measure from the actual seam and not the seam allowance. I draw a line and mark it two and a half inches from the top. I'll sew a straight stitch along this line until the two and a half inch mark and you should have something that looks like this. When I unfold this, I'll have a pleat and I'll adjust this fold so that it's facing outwards towards the side seam of the shorts. Now the seam that joins the two pieces is hidden underneath the pleat. Following the same steps, I'm going to add two more pleats on both sides of the original pleat. Also, the reason I'm adding all of those pleats is because I want the shorts to kind of look like a skirt, but still be shorts. This is what it should look like with all three pleats. Here's what it looks like on the wrong side, and as you can see here, I sewed a straight stitch on each one inch section two and a half inches from the top. Now I'm going to sew a straight stitch across the pleats, securing them in place like so. 
I've gone ahead and drafted the pattern for my pocket and then cut it out of the fabric. I'll place these pieces right sides facing and sew along the side here to secure. I also understitched the pocket to the seam allowance so it doesn't peek out when the garment is worn. Here is what the pocket looks like sewn on and I went ahead and repeated all of these steps to make the mirrored front piece. Now I'm placing my front pieces right sides facing and I'll sew along the center front seam to secure and this is what the front of the shirt should look like now. Moving on to the back. Here is the pattern I'll be using and here is the fabric cut out. I chose not to sew the dart because I'll be adding elastic here a little later. I've cut out my pocket piece and once again I'm placing them right sides facing and sewing along this side to secure. Following those same steps, I made the other side. With the front of my shorts right sides up, I placed the corresponding back piece right sides facing and I'll sew along the side seam, around the pocket, and continue down the rest of the side seam, and it should look something like this. Repeat on the other side, and just like that, the shorts are starting to take shape. So I actually went ahead and sewed the center back seam together for my shorts because I just wanted to put them on and make sure I was happy with the fit before I attached the waistband. Even though I was always going to elasticize the back, I initially thought I would need a zipper as well because I just thought it wouldn't be wide enough to fit over my hips, but it does, so let's add the waistband. I cut out two strips of fabric that are three inches tall. The shorter one matches the width of the front of the shorts and the longer one matches the width of the back of the shorts. I also ironed on fusible interfacing to half of this shorter waistband. I've only added this to the front waistband and not the back waistband. Now I'm placing my pieces right sides facing, matching up the side seams and sew to secure. I'm folding the waistband wrong sides facing and press to create a crease in the middle of the waistband. Now I'm flipping the waistband over so that the side of the waistband with the interfacing will be pinned to the top of the shorts. Match up the side seams and pin. Sew to secure and now I'm using that pressed crease from earlier to fold the waistband to the right side. I'm turning my shorts to the wrong side so I can attach this one inch wide elastic. I take one end of the elastic and pin it to the side seam making sure that it's in between the pressed crease and the seam that joins the waistband to the shorts. Then I repeat this on the other side. Sew with a straight stitch and it should look something like this. Turn the shorts to the right side and fold the waistband under using the crease from earlier as a guide. To secure the waistband, I'm going to stitch in the ditch all the way around. This is the waistband and this is the top of the shorts. I'm going to carefully sew in the seam making sure I catch the waistband underneath. Because of the elastic, sewing the back is slightly tricky. So I've sewn all the way in the front but I've only sewn the back to this point. Now I'm going to pull the elastic until this section can lay flat enough for me to continue sewing the rest of the waistband. Once the waistband is fully secure, even out the elastic in the back. To finish the shorts, I'm flipping them inside out and lining up the front and back pieces here. Sew with a straight stitch and these shorts are almost done. Last step is to hem by folding the raw edge up twice and sewing to secure. I'm done with the shorts, but I'm still kind of unclear with exactly what I want to do for the crop top situation. I know I want it to be cropped, but I haven't quite decided exactly the style I'm going for. So I'm going to move on to the white blouse and I'm going to be using this pattern that I made for the Mora dress a few videos ago. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link that down below. Side note, I am also unsure about how I feel about these shorts. I Did I add too many pleats? Why did I add so many pleats? I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on a little later because I'm hoping it'll look better as a set. Um, but I am definitely kind of sort of second guessing my design decisions right now. So I'm just going to move forward and start making the white blouse and then we'll see how it goes. This is the pattern I'll be using for the front of the top and here is the fabric cut out. Here is the pattern I'll be using for the back of the top. As you can see here, I've cropped it by about an inch and a half and I've also folded the top of the center back seam creating a V back. Here is the fabric cut out and I've also gone ahead and sewn the dart. Before sewing the front and back pieces together, I've sewn a basting stitch along the shoulder seam of the front piece. I'm going to gather it until it matches the shoulder seam of the back and sew to secure. Following the same steps, I've gone ahead and made the other side and I'll sew these two pieces together along the center back. To finish the neckline, I've made a facing that I'll sew to the top to hide all of the raw edges. Give it a good press so that everything is nice and neat and I've also understitched the facing to the seam allowance. Moving on to the sleeves, I'm using a large piece of paper to draft the pattern. I'm using my top as a guide so I lay this side flat and trace out this curve. Using my ruler, I draw a horizontal line at the base of the curve. Now I'm adding 4 inches to both sides of the sleeve. You can add more or less depending on how puffy you want your sleeves to be. I'm adding 2 inches to the highest point of the sleeve cap and then freehanding a sleeve cap curve. I decided I wanted it to be a little bit taller so I added 1 more inch to the highest point and adjusted the sleeve cap curve. Then I drew 2 vertical lines that are about 20 inches long completing the sleeve pattern. Cut this out and here is the sleeve pattern. Using this pattern, I cut out my first sleeve. I fold this right sides facing and sew along here to secure. 
Now I'll hem the sleeve by folding over twice and I'll sew all the way around leaving a one inch gap. Here is what it should look like and I've left this gap so I can insert my quarter inch wide elastic. Using a safety pin, I thread the elastic through the channel. I'll sew the ends of the elastic together and then close up this gap and you'll have something that looks like this. I've also sewn a basting stitch from here to here and now I'll pin the sleeve to the top. As you can see here, I've pinned most of the sleeve to the top and I'm going to gather this section until it matches the arm side and I'll sew to secure. This is what it should look like. Following the same steps, I went ahead and attached the other sleeve. Now to finish the bottom of the top. I cut out a strip of fabric that is the same width as the bottom of the back of the top. Then I cut out two long strips with whatever fabric I had left over. All of these strips measure three inches tall. Now I'm going to sew these three pieces together, making sure the shorter strip is in the center, creating one long strip. As you can see here, I've already gathered this side of the top. To gather the other side, I've sewn a basting stitch and I'll gather until it matches the other side in length and for me that was six and a half inches. Now I'll pin this strip of fabric to the bottom of the top, making sure I line up the side seam and continue to pin all the way around, making sure that these long ends are towards the center front. These will become the tie closure. Sew all the way around and you should have something that looks like this. To hide the raw edges, I'm folding up once and then folding again so that the folded edge meets the seam that joins the strip to the top and sew to secure. I'll do this to the entire length of the long strip. Here is a close up. You can see that all of the raw edges are now hidden and I'll sew all the way around to secure. Here is what the finished top should look like. You can tie a little bow in the front or the way I'm planning on wearing this is wrapping the tie around my body and tying the bow in the back. I also later realized that I can wear this top backwards for a higher neckline in the front with a low back. It is a new day and I finally decided what I want to do with the crop top. I did my makeup, which is really rare for days that I'm sewing or working on projects, but I have to film a self tape audition, which I'm super excited about because that means that theater is coming back, but also really nervous and terrified because I haven't danced or sung in over a year. So yeah, back to the top. I'm going to be making a bralette style top based on this free pattern. This pattern comes with a tutorial and a list of supplies you'll need. Here is what the actual pattern looks like and I'll make sure to link this down below. I'll be using the size large pattern and here it is cut out of the fabric. Then I went ahead and cut out the merit side cup. This is the center front pattern and it'll be cut on fold and it should look something like this. As you can see here, I've modified the pattern slightly because I wanted to widen this section. Now I'll place my pieces right sides facing and sew along these two sides and you'll have something that looks like this. I've trimmed off the extra fabric here, cleaning up the shape and creating these two peaks. Before we move on, I wanted to quickly mention that the pieces that I cut out for the top does have fusible interfacing on it, but the only reason for that is because I'm using the facing piece of the original dress and that had fusible interfacing ironed on and I just don't really want to peel that off. Moving on, I've cut out a strip of fabric that is the same width as the front of the top and about 3 inches tall. I'm placing these right sides facing and I'll sew here to secure. I'm finishing the bottom the same way as I did with the white blouse by folding it up twice and sewing to hide all of the raw edges. Here is what the bottom looks like now and you can see here that I finished these three raw edges with some DIY bias tape. Using this strip of fabric, I'll cover the raw edge the same way I would with store-bought bias tape and then continue to sew along the entire strip, hiding all of the raw edges and these will become the straps. For the back, I've cut out a long piece of fabric. I didn't have a long enough piece from the fabric that I had left over so I sewed three pieces together. Using elastic thread, I'll sure rows every half of an inch. To create the shirring, I have elastic thread in the bobbin, my tension is set at 3, and my stitch length is set at 4. This is what the back should look like when it's done. I'm placing it right sides facing onto the front of the top and I'll sew along the side seams. Here is the completed top and I've also gone ahead and sewed the straps to the back. Here is what it looks like with the shorts as a set. I'm just about to call Madison and I'm so excited to show her what I made and I'm also so excited to see what she made. Hi! Hi. I'm really excited to show you what I made, but do you want to remind everybody what you got me first? So one of them was a green dress with like floral, flowery embroidery. Um, and then mm -hmm. the other one was a white linen dress, I think. Um, so I chose them because they were very summery yeah. and fun. And it also had a lot of fabric that you could work with. And it was also very unique fabric for how like it was treated, all that stuff. So I will admit that I found it a little bit challenging because I'm not great with color and you are so amazing at color and I'm not great with color and I was like oh no like what am I going to make this I kind of was like inspired by like 40s and 50s like swimwear with this one um doesn't make any sense right now but it'll, it'll make sense in a second this is the one where it's worn all together I love those pants oh my gosh yes with the pleats 
those are definitely very like 1940s which I'm obsessed with <laughs> oh my goodness this is so cool like I feel like you always have in your mind an idea of like what someone could turn something into but then like you have to see what they actually turn it into and this is like so amazing and the top as well the sleeves are so cool and the tie like this is not what I pictured at all but it's like way way better it's so awesome I'm gonna show you what it looks like like without the top that is like the cutest thing ever <laughs> it's so perfect for summer and you have like the cutout which is like super in and then all of like the ruching in the back I feel like I'm always surprised at what we can create like thrift flipping something because they always think that we never have enough fabric and then somehow it just all works out in the end where you're able to make what you wanted to make. Yeah. I used like every little piece of the fabric for the green dress, like every single piece. Okay, and then I have one more to show you where I flipped the white top um, the other way so you can kind of wear it with like a low <gasps> V. How fun is that? That, I feel like that one you can almost like wear out in the evening because of just like the neckline and everything so you can just mix and match it. Thank you so much for sending me those things because I would have never, I don't think I would have picked like the green dress. I think I would have picked the white dress to thrift flip but the green was definitely like it was a really good challenge, like a surprising challenge. Well, I absolutely love what you turn them into. Like, now I want to go and make a set like that. Those shorts are giving me so many ideas. Like, I need a pair of those in my wardrobe. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this thrift flip challenge with me. I've had so much fun, and I'm so excited to see your video. Thanks. I'm looking forward to showing it. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this thrift flip and if you want to see more thrift flip challenge videos like this one. Make sure you check out Madison's video to be blown away by what she made and that you're following her for all of your sewing and fashion content. If you want to see more photos of my thrift flip outfit, make sure you're following me on Instagram and on TikTok. I had so much fun making this collaboration video and as always, thank you so much for watching.